All right, the Calgary Police Service Homicide Unit is investigating the sudden death of a man that went into medical distress on board an aircraft yesterday bound for Amsterdam. At approximately 3 p.m. on Tuesday, August the 7th, 2018, pardon me, approximately 3 p.m. on Tuesday, August 7th, 2018, the CPS airport unit members responded to an aircraft that had been returned to the gate after a male passenger had an altercation with two Canada Border Service Agency officers prior to takeoff. Officers found one man in medical distress who was removed from the aircraft and transported to hospital, where he was later pronounced deceased. An autopsy has been completed. The cause and manner of death are still to be determined. The identity of the man will not be released until next to kin notification is completed. We do not have a definitive time frame of when that will be done. There are still many witnesses that need to, uh, that we need to speak to in order to protect the integrity of the investigation. We are limited in what we are able to share at this time. Anyone who may have witnessed this incident is asked to contact the Calgary Police Service. No, I can answer your... So you had the autopsy, but still no cause of death? Is, will the autopsy not lend itself to more answers yeah, the medical examiner's office is waiting for further testing to come back. Okay. Yeah. In the press release, um, it said the man was fine to answer them. Is he of Dutch nationality? Uh, we can't tell you what nationality he is. Um, Do you, uh, can you share what his age is? Or what? Uh, the individual was 49 years old. Do you know how long he was in Canada? Um, that is, he has been here for a period of time. For the details, we'll have to uh, refer you to Canada Border Services Agency in regards to that. We know he had been in Calgary for a significant period of time. Years or months? Uh, we know he'd been here for at least years, yes. Depending on how your investigation goes, um, is there a potential for a Calgary police to charge one or both of the CBSA officers? Uh, at this time, we are not anticipating any charges to be laid. Based on the information we have right now, yeah. Those two officers also were treated. Are they, are they released? They yes, they've been released from hospital. Can you talk at all to the extent of their injuries? Uh, they had uh, relatively minor injuries. Do you know the state of the man before he boarded the aircraft? Um, those are details of the investigation. Obviously, he made it onto the aircraft. So under his own. Was he distraught? Was he, I mean, he was being removed from the country. He presumably didn't want to go. Well, again, those are parts of the investigation. We don't want to uh, taint any witnesses that haven't been spoken to at this point. So we want to make sure that any information uh, that we release isn't going to um, affect what, what a witness may tell us. Can you tell us what flight he was on? Like what airline flight or anything? Uh, it was uh, KLM flight 678. Uh, in the press release, uh, I believe there's a request for witnesses to come forward. Has Calgary Police um, spoken to witnesses yet? Or are you still in the process of gathering witnesses? We have spoken to some witnesses. We're still in the process of talking to uh, a number of people that we haven't spoken to. Can you um, share how long the man was in detention? With, with CBSA and also the reason for his defense? No, that's for CBSA to speak to. Can you say whether a weapon was discharged? Uh, yeah, at this time, we have uh, no information that uh, a weapon was used. But like I say, we have other people that we haven't spoken to, so to protect the integrity of the investigation, we... Uh, How important is it, do you think, that for, for people who may know somebody who went back on that flight to, to, to notify you guys? Or to, to Absolutely. We want to talk to everybody. We want to do a fair and impartial investigation, a complete investigation, and it's going to be a thorough investigation, and there for, um, you know, the time frame is going to be months down the road before we can say the investigation is completed. We're going to wait for the autopsy, the official autopsy to come back before um, the investigation is complete. Being 
Um, that's not for us to say at this time. Can you say whether or not this individual is known to Calgary Police before he was discovered? Or? He was not known to Calgary Police. What knowledge, if any, do you have of um, other detainee deaths happening as a result of CBSA custody in Calgary? Uh, personally, I'm not aware of any. Are you confident saying this is the first time in this city? Uh, I've, I can't say that for sure. Um, yeah. How unique is this case to you? Oh, it's very unique. We, we rarely come across an incident where we have an in custody death uh, that we investigate. Let alone on an aircraft? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did, did that pose some other problems? Um, Obviously, some of the witnesses, uh, the air, air, airplane turned around and, and left. Obviously, some of the witnesses were still on the flight, um, so we didn't have first-hand opportunity to interview those witnesses right away. So, yeah, that that creates a challenge for us, for sure. Can you talk a little bit of the logistics of that? So they went to Amsterdam. They are Absolutely. Out of the country. So tell me about how you've been investigating. Is it, is it well, we're we're in contact with the the authorities in the Netherlands to assist us in in. Uh, Carrying out those interviews, so. So they via television, or sorry, television, telephone. Uh, some of them, then. Um, as far as how we will do it, um, logistically, we will carry uh, those out in whatever medium we need to. This is probably a traumatic event. Whatever it had, did actually happen on board that aircraft. What uh, implication would that be to the passengers that witnessed this? Obviously, it's a traumatic event, and uh, yeah, people, uh, you know, uh, would be troubled by by uh, somebody uh, going into medical distress in front of them. Were they uh, dead before they they left? Essentially, or tell us the timeline: uh, the person died in the hospital, or, or so the incident occurred roughly at uh, three p.m. and he was declared deceased at the hospital um, at approximately 4.30 p.m. Just kind of building off the previous questions, you, you said this is a very unique case. Should we at all in any way take this as an indication of how serious it is, um, especially given that the homicide unit is investigating? Is that, is that an indication? No, this, um, obviously any, uh, any death, any sudden death, we, uh, we investigate thoroughly. Um, this is an in, in custody death uh, uh, relating to some CBSA officers. Um, yeah, we're going to do a thorough and complete investigation regardless of the circumstances, whether it was uh, the fact that um, the CBSA does not fall under uh, ACERT's purview in, in Alberta. That's why we're doing the investigation. It's an in custody death and therefore in custody deaths have to be undertaken by an impartial uh, agency and we're the impartial agency conducting the investigation. Are the agents on leave now? Uh, that's for, I don't know CBSA's protocols with respect to that and you'll have to ask CBSA for those types of uh, answers. And, and what you're saying is that essentially you're the assert of the CBSA, they, they need to well, that part of their protocol? Is that, okay, we need somebody else to investigate? Is that the third party? Yeah, uh, you can mean from, uh, from a logistics point of view and from an impartial, impartiality point of view, uh, we're the body to investigate this step. So just to clarify on the timeline, uh, you said the, the altercation, the incident happened around 3, he was right. rushed to the hospital and then um, died around 4.30 or was pronounced at 4.30? Approximately an hour and a half. So he goes to hospital, what happens then? Did the plane immediately then take off or would there have been a chance to um, get statements from witnesses before it left? Well, we did have officers uh, with the airport unit um, on board the plane um, assisting with, uh, with the situation. So they were able to uh, provide us with uh, contact info or names of individuals who were witnesses. So. But 
but they essentially continued on to Amsterdam. That's correct. Yeah. And was there much of a delay? Um, I I'm not sure of the exact time the plane left and how much delay there was between um, the individual being uh, escorted off the plane and the plane leaving. What's next? Well, we're going to continue to uh, talk to everybody and anybody that we can identify as a witness and we'll complete our investigation. Like I said, the timing of this, uh, we will be waiting for the autopsy report to come back officially before the investigation is uh, completed. Should we be expecting an update from Harriet Police uh, of the results of the autopsy? Um, like I say, the autopsy normally can take six months for the actual complete findings to come back. So we're telling you that the timeline is likely going to be six months anyway. Before this, well, or yeah, that absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, Have you been in touch with the next of kin? Uh, we are in the process of talking to the authorities in the in the deceased's uh, home country to arrange next of kin to be notified. As of yet, have yet to be notified. They have, as as of now, they have not been notified. Yeah, and we're still working for that. As you can appreciate, with uh, a foreign country and, and uh, gathering information, determining who next to kin are, um, it, it's not like we have to do a next to kin notification even anywhere in North America, which would be significantly uh, less time than what we're having to do now for the next to kin notification. When you say escorted on the plane, was it literally? Under power or Again, that's part of that's part of the details. We don't want to taint uh, people that may have been witnesses. We want to uh, make sure that they provide us with their own recollection of events. And sorry, how old was he? Do we know? Uh, Forty-nine years old. Okay. And you said years in Calgary, in our city. Uh, yes, that's that's the information we have. No, um, it will be, uh, you know, we'll, like I said before, we'll do a complete thorough investigation. Uh, these investigations take time, and like any investigation, especially uh, in this situation, we're going to wait for the autopsy results to come back, official autopsy results to come back, and we're looking at a time frame of probably a, of at least six months.